Hi and welcome to 2.3, the solving radical equations. Um, so we're going to be solving equations both algebraically, uh, this example here, oh I'll get a highlighter, algebraically, and then we'll also be solving it graphically. So um, if you want to use a, a graphing calculator, so to solve graph graphically you could have something like a TI-83 uh, or any of those generations. You could also use uh, software such as Desmos.com. You could also be using GeoGebra.com uh, as well. Or you can uh, not be using any software at all. And so you will be given the option on tests and exams to solve algebraically or graphically. I still want you to go through all the methods of solving graphically because you still have to understand there will be uh, questions um, where you may have to explain, for example, how to solve graphically, or there might be an illustration and you have to use the graph to, to solve things. So even if you're not going to be using the TID3 or Desmos or GeoGebra or anything like that, you still will, should be doing this lesson. Okay, so starting off at the beginning here, it says we're going to solve this algebraically. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to square both sides. So when we square both sides, we're going to get uh, x plus 4 is equal to 9. And then we'll subtract 4 from both sides. And then we'll get 5. And we should do a quick check. All right, in all these, uh, today we're going to be doing checks. Uh, we're going to see, uh, we're going to test this x equals 5 business here. So we're going to look at the square root of 5 plus 4. Is that actually equal to 3? And we'll say the square root of 9 is equal to 3. Yes, it works. Okay. I'm just going to write you a note about like why we're doing the checks and all that. And, and, and hopefully this little explanation will help you out. When I said earlier that this is the the radical sign, uh, and we mean this to mean square root. If there's no number, we imply a 2 there. We actually, when we put that out, we mean that this is the principal square root. Means principal. And this is, uh, I think, something from grade 11, principal square root. Because if I say what is the square root of 9, uh, the square root of 9, there's actually two versions of it. The square root of 9, there could be a, a positive 3 or a negative 3. So if we mean both of them, we put a plus or minus out front. If we only, if we don't put anything out there, then we're going to say we only want the positive one. So in other words, principal means the positive version the positive square root. So when I say the square root of x plus 4, I mean the positive version. You notice that this could not have been um, negative afterwards. So the square root of x plus 4 is going to be the positive version, not the negative version. Um, it's slightly different than, say, if I said, let's say if I said y squared is equal to 9, then I would say y is equal to plus or minus 3. So when I'm taking the square root of a square, if I'm kind of undoing that, then it can be plus or minus, right? Which is different than saying y is equal to the square root of 9. There I just get y is equal to 3. Okay, so in this situation here, I want to keep the positive and the negative. I, you don't see a radical sign. You don't see a square root. So when I say y squared is equal to 9, here it's y is plus or minus 3. When I just have y is equal to the square root of 9, this is, means the principal square root, only, only the positive version, please. So therefore, I'm going to give the positive. If I meant to say both of them, then I would say plus or minus the square root of 9, and then the answer would be y is equal to plus or minus 3. Okay, so I hope that helps. Uh, all right, so we have an answer, and it worked out. We had x equals 5. Well, we could solve this graphically now and see what we've done. Is Notice what we've done. We've, we've gone from this to this. So what did we do? We said, well, I want to say y equals that. And so we subtracted 3 from both sides and said y is equal to the square root of x plus 4 minus 3. So I guess the first step would have been when I had x plus 4, trying to write it, is equal to 3. The first step would have been uh, 
you know, take the easier side and, and make it equal to zero. Like whichever is, is simpler, if I make the right hand side equal zero, then I get like this, the square root of x plus four minus three equals zero, and then substitute a y there, and that's when we get this, right? We get y is equal to that. And when we graph that, there is our answer. There is our five. Remember our, our value was x equals five. So in other words, the answer is wherever the line crosses the x-axis, and there's some text down here. Graphically, the solution is the zero of the function, since taking the original equation and setting it equal to zero is how we found. What does this phrase mean? Zero of the function. Zero of the function means x is equal to what? when y is equal to zero. What's x equal to when y is equal to zero? Or another way of saying it is the x-intercept means exactly the same thing. Here's three different ways of saying the same thing. The zeros, the roots, and the x-intercepts. All in English mean the same thing, where this line crosses the x-axis. And it also represents the solution, or plural, solutions to the equation. In this one, it, there is only one solution. Right? It only crosses the x-axis at one place. So uh, I'm just going to give you a note here about there are two ways of doing graphical solutions. Okay, so two, two methods of graphical solutions. Solutions. There, that's a short form of solutions. So the first one we just did. Okay, if we have, let's say we've got this square root of x plus 4 equals 3. Method number 1 is to say, put this all in under, under 1. Say y is equal to the square root of x plus 4 minus 3. And the answer is where the, x, uh, where the function crosses the x-axis. Solution equals... is the x value where graph crosses x-axis. x-axis, that's the one we just did. Okay, the, the second way you can do it, and we're going to see it on the next page, if we're doing that same one, if we're doing this root x plus 4 is equal to 3, we set up two different graphs. We say y1 is equal to the square root of x plus 4, and then we do another one. We say y2 is equal to 3, and then we see where they cross. Okay? Uh, solution is the x value of where they meet. If they meet at one place, there's one solution. If they meet at zero places, there's no solution. Two places, two solutions, and so on. Okay, so this one we've done already, so we can sort of check that off. Yeah, did that, first example. Example number two is where we're gonna do this style, okay? So if we're gonna do that style, well, back up. Let's first do it algebraically. Okay, so algebraically what we need to do, uh, just like we did before, uh, we're going to square both sides. So when we square both sides, on the left-hand side, we will get x plus 5. On the right-hand side, this will get squared. Now when we square it, there's uh, sort of two methods. You can do it f the FOIL method, or you can just think about, um, well, when I, when I talk about it, I say, you know, the, the binomial squared pattern. So let's do the FOIL first, and then we'll talk about the binomial square pattern. So if we do the FOIL, it's really like x minus 1 times x minus 1. First is x times x is x squared. Outer is x times negative 1, so it's minus x. Inner is x times minus 1, so it's minus x. Outer is negative 1 times negative 1, so it's plus 1. So I get x squared minus 2x plus 1. 
you would not believe how many people miss this term. And they think x minus 1 all squared is going to be x squared times minus, or, and then plus minus 1 squared. And they forget all about that. Okay, so the other one, this, uh, this a plus b all squared idea is that just we're just recognizing this pattern. If you had to do FOIL over and over again, you would say, oh yeah, we're always going to get our, our first term, a squared, and we're going to get our last term, that's b squared, so in this case the negative 1 squared turned into positive 1, and in the middle we get two of these, minus x. Where'd that come from? It's from this times that. So the middle term is 2 of a times b. Okay, so this is usually what I think of when I think of this. So I think it's going to be x squared, and then 2 of x times negative 1, and then negative 1 squared. Enough talk. Let's just go to the next line. So the next line is x plus 5 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now to solve for x, uh, we're going to get 0 on one side, so I'm going to subtract an x from both sides, so I'll have... 5 is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 1. Now I'll subtract 5 from both sides, so I'm going to get 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x minus 4. Okay, now I need to bring out my factoring a trinomial skill, and I'm going to say, okay, uh, because it's x squared, it'll be an x and an x. I want two numbers that multiply out to negative 4 and add up to negative 3. So not too much thinking. Maybe after a while we'll figure it out. It'll be minus 4 plus 1. Let's test it out. Negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Sounds good. So my two possible answers so far is going to be x is equal to negative 1 is one answer. Or the other answer could be x is equal to 4. We need to check. So in all these examples we need to check. So let's do our check here. So first of all let's check our uh, x equals negative 1. So looking back at our beginning here we'll get the square root of negative 1 plus 5. Is that equal to negative 1 minus 1? Negative 1 plus 5 is 4. The square root of 4, is that equal to negative 2? No, it's not. So we don't want this one, so we're going to say, nope, not good. We're going to cross that one out. We'll even cross it out there, too. We'll do our second check. Now we're going to check uh, x is equal to 4. So again, going back to the beginning, uh, this x plus 5 business, so I'll say the square root of 4 plus 5, is that equal to 4 minus 1? So the square root of 9 is equal to 3. We like it. So just to emphasize the fact that I like it, I'll put that x equals 4 there. Okay, so now let's solve the same equation graphically. And uh, this is kind of done for us already. y is equal to the square root of x plus 5 and y is equal to y2. So you'll notice how this was done. Just like I mentioned earlier, we're going to say this is the first y. That's my second y is equal to, and we graph both of them and we see where they meet. Now it, it really wouldn't be that hard to do this without a graphing calculator, because when you're looking at this, this the parent function here would be y is equal to square root of x, except it's the h value is equal to negative 5. In other words, it's moved left 5, so starting at the origin we move left 5, and now we can say, okay, now we're going to go you know, over 1, up 1, and then remember we go over 4 and then up 2, so we go over 4 and up 2, and that's our, our next point. Uh, go over 9, so from negative 5 go up to 4 and then go up 3. So you can get you can get the first three points and sketch them out. And this y is equal to x minus 1. It's, it's a straight y equals x, but we go down 1. So we start with our y and negative 1 and just do the the rise of one, run of one, until we meet right there. We could actually have graphed this by hand and gotten the answer. So they meet at an x value of three and a y value, oh, pardon me, an x value of four and a y value of three. So what's the solution? It's the x value, okay? x equals four, that's what we want to use. So when x equals four, the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So in other words, that is a true statement, and that's the same as our x equals 4 here. OK, 
Okay, so just to give a little insight into earlier what I said about this principal square root idea, if I had put a minus part to that x plus 5, and I think you kind of remember this from the previous chapter, then we would have gotten something that looked like this, right? It would have gone over like this, and that is where this would have met over here. So this is if we would have had negative the square root of x plus 5, right, is equal to uh, x minus 1. Then they would have met at that point at that x equals negative 1 would have worked. But because it's the principal square root or the positive square root, we only draw it up to the right. So there you go. I'll erase that. Hide the evidence. Okay, moving on to example number three. Uh, it looks a little bit different now. Now we've got a we've got a quadratic term here, an x squared term underneath that radical sign. We're going to start off exactly like we did before. We're going to square both sides. So we're going to say when we square both sides we'll get 2x squared plus 1 is equal to, can we do it? Can we square this all at once? We'll get the x squared, don't forget the middle term, of 2x plus 1. Okay, so now we're going to get everything over to one side and put a 0 on the other side. So when I subtract an x squared from both sides, I'm left with just an x squared on the left. When I subtract a 2x from both sides, I get a minus 2x. And when I subtract a 1 from each side, they disappear, so I get equals 0. Okay. Now what I want to do is, I don't want to divide both sides by x, because you know that whole division by 0 error, and then one of my answers will disappear. What I want to do is I want to factor out both uh, x here. I want to say x multiplied by x minus 2 is equal to 0. Okay, so now I get uh, my two answers. I get x equals 0 or x equals 2. All right, so had I, had I you know, go over here, and had I divided both sides by x, and I would have got, uh, you know, x minus 2 equals 0, then one of my roots would have disappeared, right, if I would have done that. So I, I don't want to do that. I want to factor out this x, and then I get those two terms. I still need to do my check, so we'll do our check, and we'll check for the x equals 0 statement here. So looking over here, I get the square root of 2 times 0 squared, which is 0, plus 1. Is that equal to 0 plus 1? This is my attempt at a question mark. The square root of 1 is equal to 1. Yeah, that sounds good, so we like it. Uh, you know, put a box around it. Good. And now we'll try the second one. What about when x is equal to 2? Question mark. So I'll say 2 times uh, 2 squared plus 1, the square root of all that. Uh, is that equal to 2 plus 1? 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8 plus 1 is 9. So is the square root of 9 equal to 3? Yes, it is. So in other words, this is also good. They're both good answers. Okay, so we get two answers, two solutions. All right, let's see how that looks graphically. And again, this is the part where you know, you'd throw it into a uh, graphing calculator or something like that to, to solve. Uh, 2x squared plus 1, and here is, that's what it looks like here, is our, uh, the, the curvy one is the square root of 2x squared plus 1, and x plus 1 is here. So you can see the two places that they meet. This is 0, 1, and this is 2, 3. And remember, you take the x values, so your solutions are this 0 and this 2. Okay. So when are these true? The square root of 2x squared plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 at these two spots, when x equals 0 and x is equal to 2. So solution Again, I'll just write it out. Solution, in this case solutions, are the x values of common points. And we got it. All right. Is there more to do? Oh, there is a your turn. Okay, time for you to try this out here. So, Here's what I'd like you to do. Uh, I will hit pause and you will try this out. Solve the following equations both algebraically and graphically. And so when you do it graphically, now is the time. Either get some type of graphical solution or it's really not that hard. You could actually 
graph that out. Okay, I'll stop now, or actually, you pause now, uh, try it out, and then I'll do the answer for part A. All right, I've got an answer here for you. So I added three to both sides, and then I squared. I got a value of x equals 4. Did a check. It seems to work, so I like the answer. Uh, going over to the graphical side, there's really uh, two approaches. You could graph the whole y is equal to square root of x plus 5 minus 3, and then find out where it crosses the x-axis. Or you could actually split it up and say, uh, you know, really, the first step would be say 3 is equal to the square root of x plus 5. And then graph y equals 3 and y is equal to root x plus 5 and see where they meet. So I went with the first method here. So you may have done the other method. So I'd graph this. It's not so hard to do without a uh, graphing calculator because we would just recognize it's my simple y is equal to root x parent function left uh, 5 and down 3. So when I go left 5 down 3 this is where I end up. And then it's not too hard figuring out these points. It's up 1 over 1 and then I gotta go up 2 over 4 because the uh, square root of 4 is 2 and then this last one where I go to the right 9 so this distance here is 9, and this distance here is 3. That's when I end up at that x-axis, and that is my 0, and that is x is equal to 4. And I'm all happy, because it's the same one as I got Ooh, over here. Nice, okay. All right, so time for the second one. Oh, is it, there is a second one. So I think when you solve this one graphically, you will have to do two graphs. Uh, it's a little bit funky if you want to do it without a graphing calculator or without software. Uh, so if you want to be bold, you can do it, you know, with freehand on the graphing paper. Uh, if not, it's okay to get some graphing calculator out or uh, software out. So first do algebraically, then do graphically, and I'll see you in a second. All right, let's see how you did. So um, I squared both sides, and I got 16 minus 8x plus 8x squared. Did some math, and I found two solutions, x minus 2 and x minus 5. When I did my check, I realized that x equals 5 is not a solution because the principal square root of 1 is not equal to negative 1. It's positive 1. Uh, so that's my solution, x equals 2, but not 5. Now, uh, I haven't finished my graphical solution, but I kind of started it. So here is my y1 is equal to the root 6 minus x. Uh, here I just changed the order to put the x value first, and then I factored out the negative. You know, so that positive 6 turns into a negative 6. And so it's my basic y is equal to root x, except there's a reflection over the y-axis. So let's think about that. So instead of, instead of it going like this, way, there's going to be a reflection over the y-axis, so uh, it'll be here kind of going like this, uh, like that, that's what my reflection is, and then it has to go to the right 6. So I should start at 6 here, and then I'll erase this business, so the 6, and then over 1, up 1, uh, over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, uh, over what, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, Okay, I'll get those first ones started. I'll just leave the dots like that. And then my other one, um, if I switch, again, put the x first. Uh, I have a y-intercept. Maybe I'll use green for this. A y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 1. So a slope of negative 1 is going to be going downhill. It looks like they're going to meet right there. So first of all, maybe I can make my little sketch look nicer. So here is my green line. Okay, there we go. And my blue line, see if I can make this look a little bit better. Something like that. And this is where they meet, right there. And the, so that value is, what is it, 2 comma 2. So uh, in this case, the x and the y value are the same, but you remember, you do take the x value. The x value is the one that you want. So my solution is uh, solution equals uh, x equals 2. And that's what I had. Okay, so um, here's your homework down the bottom, and I will see you in class.